What do I mean by dribble attack? Let me first tell you what it doesn't mean. I don't mean for you to catch the ball on the perimeter, immediately waste your dribble, back up and begin to attack. That simply says that you don't know how to attack from triple threat. I'm also not talking about standing on the perimeter and dribbling 17 times without going anywhere. In a real game, you only have four seconds because the fifth second's a violation and the other team's ball. Dancing in one place while you show the defense every weapon in your arsenal is not smart. Plus, dribbling in place gives the other four defenders time to get into their defensive help positions. Now, if you do manage to get by your man, the odds are that help defense is going to be there to stop you. And let's face it, if a player can stand in one place and shine his or her shoes with seven or eight dribbles, it's because the defense is backed off, giving her plenty of space and begging her to shoot the ball. And obviously, she can't shoot. Only a fool would step up and give her a chance to drive. The best thing for this player to do is get a jump shot and work on her shooting range. So here's what I do mean by dribble attack, and this chapter is divided accordingly. You have the ball outside of your shooting range, and you must close the gap to your defender off the dribble. Or you've used your dribble to come off a ball screen or to look for a good passing angle, but nothing develops, and now you need to attack. I'm not going to log for you all the types of dribbles that you can use at the point of attack. Those can be found on our ball handling video. There's more than enough. The stutter step, hesitation, crossover, between the legs, around the back, spin. There's the straight line moves, the in and out, fake crossover, one hand mini cross, cross recross, and more. These alone give you 10 possible moves. Now, there's no doubt that a good combination can create space to shake your defender. And so, if you put two of those 10 dribbles together in a combination, in any order, then you have a hundred possible combinations. I think that's more than enough to satisfy anyone's desire for creativity. My concern is not which combination becomes your signature move off the dribble. My concern and the goal of this chapter is to teach when, where, and how to use these moves when attacking the perimeter. The first category is when you have space to face. You have the ball outside of your shooting range, perhaps even outside of what's considered the perimeter, and you must close the gap to your defender off the dribble. As you approach your shooting range, use a body fake about one body length from your defender. You might use the shake and bake, stutter step, or hesitation to read your defender. Using one of these moves has the same purpose as a shot fake or a dry fake when you're in triple threat. If your defender backs up, then pull the trigger, quick draw. The same read as in triple threat. If his hands are down and there's space to chamber the ball in your shot pocket, then fire. It's that simple. If the defender freezes or comes out of his defensive stance, then you have the momentum advantage. Read his back and blow by him. As you make your body fake move, some defenders will force you to change direction by moving to the ball side. They'll move their head to the ball to take away the body fake straight line move. Starting your move one body length from your defender will give you enough space to beat him with a simple crossover. But now you meet the savvy, experienced defender. He's forced you to change direction with a crossover or between the legs and anticipated your move. Then counter in the other direction with a recross or between the legs dribble. In fact, some players slow the first move down a little to let the defender see it and react to it, knowing all the while that they're going to quickly counter in the other direction. This is just like slowing your shot fake when you're in triple threat. Let him see it, let him react, and then attack.
we've looked at freezing the defender, making him retreat, and moving him side to side. But you can also make some defenders lunge toward you. The dribbles that are usually used to do this involve some form of pulling back to give the impression that you're giving up space. You bait the defender to eat up the space, to come forward. The safest way to do this would be a simple pullback dribble. You could also use a between the legs or even a between the legs with one hand to draw the defender to you. Then attack with a simple open step, a crossover or behind the back. The list of combinations could go on and on. Why do some combinations work and others don't? When is enough enough? And why do some particular combinations work for some players but not for others? Let's look at one example. On the first level, let's pretend that you beat your defender with a simple change of direction and change of speed by going between your legs. Level two occurs when your defender begins to anticipate this move. As a counter, you go between your legs to move the defender and back between your legs to go the other way. Now your defender's anticipation takes you to the third level. To counter his defense of your first two change-ups, you must go between your legs and back and then add a crossover. Now, notice the progression. It starts with one simple move between your legs. Only when he stops you do you come up with a counter until it finally becomes a fake within a fake within a fake. Experiment with as many as you want, but find one or two that really moves your defender. Don't take your eyes off the goal of a combination. Get him off balance, out of position, and then take advantage in the other direction. My suggestion is to keep your combination simple to reduce your chances of a turnover. Simple usually means quick, and simple and quick means help defense has less time to adjust. The second category is when the defender is on and you have no chance to face up. The defender's pressure forces you into a power dribble. This might occur when you've taken a dribble in order to get a good passing angle. It disappeared and now you need to attack your defender. Now, when you're in a power dribble stance, the defender's pressure is keeping you from squaring up and attacking. But he's not close enough for you to seal him with a spin and go by him. What do you do? Penetrate with a power dribble, then quickly reverse dribble to create space between you and the defender. You're back in an attacking stance, but he's closing out, so you have the advantage. Here are the reads. If the defender stays, then quick draw. If the defender closes the space, but his lead foot is on the side of the ball, then drive with the open step. Just like triple threat, push the ball out there and shoot your inside arm past him. But if the other foot is up and there's space, then cross over. If there's not enough space for the crossover, go between the legs and drive. If he closes the gap body to body, then just like in chapter four, spin, seal him behind you, and attack. Don't forget that combinations can be used here as well. Keep your head up. Once you get a half step on your defender, usually shoulder to shoulder, you have other reads to consider. Where are the help defenders? Where is my open space to finish? How quickly is my defender going to recover or have I beat him clean? Remember the reads from chapter five in the mid range or moves to finish from chapter six. At this point, the content from all the chapters should be dovetailing together. And one more thing. The purpose of these moves is to make a play that leads to points on the board. I was told 35 years ago by my coach that if you don't score, your moves are for nothing. And that's still true today. Basketball is not an extreme sport. You don't get points for drawing oohs and ahs from the crowd. Paint your game with style if you must, but sign your name with points.
in the game of basketball, an offensive player standing still 